11 for this uh, under 16 division 2 championship final between Gauna and St Finbarr's the captains are out there in the centre of the field Adrian Waters and Patrick Brady with the referee Brian Crow for the toss of the coin it's calm it's overcast slippery conditions but looking at the tricolour in the corner of the pitch over there on the far side there is uh, quite of a blow of a breeze on it the teams well a similarity in colours shall we say red and green hoops of St Finbar's green with a red hoop from Gauna and uh, if we've got time we'll give you a quick check on how the teams line out first of all the Gauna team John Kiernan in goal the full back line of Emmett Sloan, James Murray and David Brady the half line Anthony Smith, Niall Madden and Emmett Madden midfield is Patrick Brady their captain and Mark McKeever the half forwards are Gary Sloan, Dara Phillips, Willie Stevenson the full forward line Ronan Shields, Kieran Fitzpatrick and Kieran Brady Dara Phillips will wear 24 and Kieran Brady 16 two jerseys missing from the counter set St Finbars with David Ward in goal the full back line of Ronan Brady, Anthony Smith and Fergus Brady the half line Damien Hannigan, Paddy Clark and John Maguire midfield Marcus McGee and Q Fitzpatrick the half forwards Mark Kelly Connor O'Reilly and Ray Fay the full forward line Martin O'Reilly Adrian Waters and Aaron McGee beside me I've got uh, Philip Finnegan and Philip I will be calling on you during the course of the game for uh, your expert analysis on it before we start Philip what are we expecting here? Uh, it'll be tight enough, but Gowdenhoff have uh, extremely strong centre field with Patrick Brady and Mark McKeever. Both those players are on the Gowdenhoff senior panel. Patrick actually played against Crossbow then last Sunday. Uh, both were obviously counting on the 16s. So if Gowdenhoff win the square there, that could tell the tale. It's underway, and I can tell you that Caden Fitzpatrick lined up at midfield. Now, Mark McKeever is playing in at full forward and in possession at the moment, getting the, foot, the left foot behind the ball, dropping it in, and dropping it over the bar there's uh, the first score of the game that's uh, the change now I see that uh, from the uh, result of the uh, as we await the kick out that now Kieran Fitzpatrick has switched into full forward because at the line up in the middle of the field for the throw in Kieran was in fact in midfield and Mark was at full forward. Now he's out there at the halfway line and we await the kick out. David Ward to take it. That kick is dropping out field. Now uh, over onto the far side and it's Mark Kelly picking it up for Drong. The linesman flagging over there on the far side. That's a gown line ball. There are some uh, positional switches. David Brady is uh, playing over on the right wing of the uh, down a defence right now it was the midfielders Patrick Brady and Mark McKeever who are uh, combining and this is Mark McKeever to drop the ball inside Patrick Brady trying to run on to it and uh, picking it up in there laying the ball back outfield taking the return pass that's passed in again to Mark McKeever turning onto the right foot dropping it in held in there by David Ward the goalkeeper gets the clearance out the field John Maguire got a touch to it and now St Finbar's that's Paddy Clarkton picking it up and sending it up the field that's nicely taken by the captain and full forward Adrian Waters dropping it inside but the gown of defence are equal to it there is Emmett Madden and Niall combine and Niall Stearns goes out to Mark McKeever out near the halfway line Mark picking it up on the toe to hand looking for options the options comes from Dara Phillips Dara Phillips lays the ball back to Patrick Brady Patrick Brady now trying to jink his way through he's got Dara Phillips to his right he goes for the shot himself he sends it to the left and he sends it wide a fairly bright start from Gowner Phillips yeah um, as I said Tommy uh, from the start there Gowner very strong centre field uh, I couldn't understand why they put McKeever in full forward but it worked straight away the ball went into him they got scored in 20 seconds Patrick Brady is a very strong big player out there you see him there already he's dominating the game so Finn Morris, they're going to have to try and nullify Patrick and if they don't they're in trouble so we wait the kick out which now comes from David Ward dropping out towards the line and it's uh, Mark McKeever who will collect it Mark being tackled in there the tackle was coming in from Marcus McGee Brian Crow has blown the whistle and the free is to go now that's uh, just in the vicinity of the 45 metre line close to the sideline that's swinging right in there towards the channel. that's fine fielding in there but uh, 
not holding on to it and uh, the St Finbar's defence now as John Maguire goes back to pick that one up and there is uh, a stoppage that's uh, a source of worry in there for the uh, Ghana lads because uh, there was a fine feeling in there by Patrick Brady he's now down injured There's uh, just over three minutes played in the first half. Down a lead by one point, two no score. And, uh, well, whatever breeze is in it, Philip, Gown are favoured by it in this first half. Yeah, the, uh, uh, the breeze isn't that strong here. It's blowing down to the far corner there and going to have that slight advantage. The pitch is quite slippy. I was on it there before the game there and possibly that uh, young chap that's down there injured, he probably twists his ankle. There, there was a lot of rain in Cavan last night. The pitch is holding out very well actually, but there is, it is slippy on top and the make conditions very difficult for feeling and uh, for holding the feet. So I'd say um, it appears to be a going to play our race. The jerseys are a bit confusing now. There's not much in the colour now, but um, Gowan are on top. As I said, Paddy Brady is the main man here, and if St Finbars can't counteract that, then St Finbars haven't got the ball up the field yet, actually. We're playing about four minutes now, as we know all Gowan. So, they have a problem there already. But uh, Paddy, Patrick Brady has a problem with that injury, Philip. He uh, looks as if Gowan are going to line him up now at full forward, but they're alternating here. With uh, Kieran Fitzpatrick, they're switching him out to midfield and they're moving out of their midfielders in. It uh, may be a little confusing for us and for the St Finbar's uh, defence until uh, they get accustomed to it. Right now, Brian Crow is about to restart the game and Patrick Brady is lined up at full forward. But it's uh, John Maguire who will send the ball upfield now for St Finbar's. Picking it up there over on the far side was Emmett Madden. Now it comes inside to Caden Fitzpatrick. Caden Fitzpatrick dropping inside to Patrick Brady. Patrick Brady now trying to draw the full back. Anthony Smith lays it inside to Caden Fitzpatrick. That's knocked away but a foul. And there's a free in to Gauna. This one is, uh, well, looks like being a very, very scorable angle for a left footed kicker. The left footed kicker is Mark McKeever. And he notches his and uh, Gauna's second uh, point of the day. They now lead by two points to no score. My timing of it is just over four minutes because I stopped the watch while Patrick Brady was being attended to. So David Ward will take the kick out for the uh, St Finbar's team. Philip mentioned about the conditions of the pitch. Well, uh, let me tell you that uh, later on this evening there's a ladies minor final here. Tomorrow there's uh, two matches as well. So that will be a test of uh, both the ground and the weather. Let's see how it holds up as the kick out comes right out into the middle of the field. And uh, while uh, pa Mark McKeever was doing up a bootless, his teammates around him uh, find possession and set him on his way. Drops it inside, Patrick Brady, Patrick Brady right across, that's neatly held in there by Kieran Fitzpatrick, that's hooked to the left and it's uh, gone wide and it remains two points, two no score, down on the line I see Joe Brady, Joe and of course Seamus McCabe who have been uh, nurturing these youngsters at uh, various age levels for the past uh, few seasons and uh, let me say doing quite a good job of them at that. That kick out is uh, collected by Mark McKeever who in turn is fouled by Marcus McGee and there's a free to Gauna just on the edge of the exclusion zone. And that's uh, with uh, just over six minutes paid, three points for Gauna and uh, They've settled in very well, very soon, Philip. 
to have there, uh, Mark McKeever is very accurate with freeze and front play. Uh, Paddy Betty got that wall up, but he's, he's going full forward. He's still limping there slightly. But uh, Gowan are dominating this game, and uh, St. Finbar so far have no answer. They haven't got the ball past the halfway line yet, so it's, it doesn't look good for St. Finbar's. Uh, McKeever's out there, send the field again, and Paddy Brady, because of the injury, is in full forward. I expect Gowan will play route one foot, but they let the ball into Paddy Brady. He's a big, strong chap. So St. Finbar's now, th th I don't know, that th th they're um, going to do something centre field. So they're about to do that now as uh, they pick up possession and uh, going forward and there was Q Fitzpatrick but uh, now there is the chance but uh, well uh, David Brady did manage to stop that but uh, eventually the ball is picked up that's well kept in up there in the corner or has it the referee has blown the whistle just as uh, Martin O'Reilly was about to turn to set up something but the ball had gone out over the end line James Murray is uh, preparing to take the kick out for Gauna. And James left foot in that one right out towards the middle. That eluding quite a number of players as uh, Gary Sloan was penalised as he uh, went back there putting in the challenge on Damien Hannigan. Now Marcus McGee, Marcus uh, leaving it off to Hugh Fitzpatrick, a little bit of mishandling there but the ball eventually coming inside and Conor O'Reilly did manage to get the ball sent, uh, laid off in there and St Finbars have opened their account to Conor O'Reilly, just over 8 minutes played. Now, they needed that score, Philip. Oh, they did badly. Uh, and uh, the last four or five minutes, they've got the ball up there now, and it's a good score. They badly needed it. It's only three points to one, but uh, they'll have to keep that momentum going if they're going to compete. As I say, Gowan had to swing at centre field. But it's good to see them getting the score, and it might settle them down a wee bit now and uh, make the game more, uh, far more competitive. So James Murray will once again kick out. Out it comes. All the way out, collected by Patrick Brady, who has been chased there by Anthony Smith. There is an Anthony Smith on both sides. Right now, Damien Hannigan was uh, going across and uh, has been awarded the free. Up it comes to Marcus McGee for St Finbars. Marcus McGee laid it off nicely, but uh, it will eventually break there for John Maguire. John Maguire switching play out. That's a good position and good running from Mark Kelly. Kelly now about to take the shot. And that's tapped out by John Kieran. But uh, that was Adrian Waters, the full forward going on. Perhaps he should have caught that, Philip. He tried to uh, fly hack it there. Fly yeah. hack it into the top corner. But uh, for a St. Finbar's point of view, I think he should have caught it. It was a bad miss. And uh, it would put him right back in the game. It was a very awkward, uh, awkward ball for John Kieran in the goals. Because it just dropped under the crossbar and he, he, he had time to, to, to uh, hold that ball and kick it. It's a bad miss for St. Finbar's and it's one that could ruin at the end of the game. So we await uh, the kick out from James Murray. Brian Crow says hurry on. I did tell you that the cornerbacks and wing halves of Gowner are playing on the opposite uh, line, so what their number suggests, but right now. Ronan Shields was going for the ball, didn't quite collect it. In it goes to Caden Fitzpatrick. Caden Fitzpatrick now trying to draw the defender as he rolls it into Mark McKeever. McKeever now turning and sending it in, dropping it in, sending it to the right and sending it wide. And it remains three points to one. The time will just about ten and a half minutes gone in the first half. As we await the kick out from David Ward. Out it comes, John McGuire collecting for St Finbars, but uh, intercepting there now was Emmett Madden, Emmett Madden feeding it down, that was going down Gary Sloan territory, but Ronan Brady is back there, and Ronan Brady steering is out over the sideline, over there about the 45 metre line, down a line ball, chipped in to Mark McKeever. 
and Mark will drop it in high, dropping in dangerous. David Ward, the goalkeeper, collecting, and David Ward clearing his lines for St Finbars. But it's down and now with Willie Stevens, who will uh, Stevens and who will pick it up in now to Mark McKeever. Mark McKeever across in there now, and Patrick Brady back to Willie Stevenson. Stevenson now back inside to Patrick Brady. They're playing around with it. That one is switched inside. That's uh, knocked down inside. Kieran Fitzpatrick trying to lay it back. Lays it back. Ronan Shields with the shot. Ronan Shields with the point. That was persistence and a good score. It was a good score because uh, uh, the full forward won that ball well in there. Uh, Paddy Brady seems to have, sh uh, to have shaken off that injury. He's back out, out round the middle of the field there again. And as I say, himself and McKeever, Mark's very strong. Both those guys are only 15 years of age and they're on rage again next year. Now, Paddy Brady, he's a fine big lad. He played in goals last week for the seniors. So he's some future ahead of him. Ground is seen to be in control. I think they will wear some, uh, some fimbers down unless the fimbers obviously can do something around centre field but at the moment the team kind of seems that, that little bit stronger actually Patrick came on a half forward was the other Paddy Brady who played in goal was it? yes <laughs> and all mixed up yeah yeah but uh, I knew he was playing yeah uh, but, he came uh, on yeah. a sub so yeah, yeah I mixed them up the apologies to Gavin Shields So David Ward restarts the game with the kick out and it's uh, Marcus McGee but that's knocked away from him by Kieran Fitzpatrick, tries to lay it off and gets it off to Mark McKeever, Mark now as John McGuire puts in the challenge, Marcus McGee is going with him but it's still Mark McKeever going forward, now trying to get round the centre half, the centre half is Paddy Clark and he pulls him down, there's a free in, dead straight in front of the goal. Referee Brian Crow just taking a note of the defender's number and the shot is uh, blasted, it comes off the crossbar and uh, well, there was some power to that shot as is now cleared out the field and Ray Fay has got it for St Finbar's Ray Fay will send it right across into the middle now St Finbar's beginning to open up that's Mark Kelly who will lay it on in there now to Q Fitzpatrick Fitzpatrick uh, making good headway as uh, Niall Madden goes across Fitzpatrick drops it in John Cairnan is there in the goal gets it out to James Murray James Murray will get it further outfield and uh, Who's back defending who but Patrick Brady? A long ball out the field. Paddy Turkin bringing it down on the halfway line. Tackled by uh, Dara Phillips and the ball laid off. And now it's uh, Mark Kelly who will come forward in there to Conor O'Reilly. O'Reilly sending it in. That one's going to the right. That's gone wide. But uh, Philip St. Finbars are showing promise. They're uh, so showing some nice touches in attack, even though they didn't register a score from that one. Yeah. Uh when the Fimbers get the ball up, uh, the white cable of opening up the, open that guy with the fence, the problem is getting the ball up there. But we've seen there in the last two or three moves, the quite capable of uh, causing damage up there was getting the ball up. But I think when the Fimbers get up there, they need to the score. It's 4 1 now, they're not to miss the goal on the point. So they need to the score. So Mark Kelly come forward, he's won quite a bit of possession lately in the game. Now Aaron McGee gets it in and here's the shot. That's a great goal there from Adrian Waters. Oh, some goal, some strike. That's exactly what the game needed. It's exactly what the Fimmers needed. It was some strike. It, uh, it really uh, hit that ball, he walloped. He knew he was going for the goal and he, he went for it and he got it. Great goal. So they're level at four points to 1-1. One, one. <laughs> We had just uh, said a few minutes uh, prior to that that uh, they were tracked in. Now Marcus McGee couldn't quite hold on to that but uh, neither could John Maguire as Willie Stevenson gets the ball across but uh, Marcus McGee picks it up and now St Finbar's come attacking again. James Murray and Adrian Waters underneath it and is tapped down. That's uh, breaking loose inside and Niall Madden picking it up, clearing it out. That uh, slips away and Ronan Shields is chasing after it. Ronan to pick it up for Gauna. Crossing the halfway line. Jabbing the ball down to Keaton Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick uh, being held. And uh, there's a free in. Mark McKeever will take the free. Oh, 
So 16 minutes played in the first half and uh, they're all square. Down a lead again through the boot of Marky McKeever, five points to St Finbar's, one goal and one. We await the kick out. Dropping out. John McGuire picks it up. Tries to lay it off, but uh, Mark McKeever is there to intercept. Feeding it inside to Kieran Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick looking around, decides to take on the defence himself. Penalised. <laughs> So Brian Crow will uh, move the ball out a little bit. <laughs> Fergus Brady's kick is collected by Patrick Brady and Patrick Brady feeds it into Caden Fitzpatrick. Caden Fitzpatrick from out on the right sending it in, sending it wide and it remains down at five points. St Finbar's one goal and one, just the one between them. We approach the 18th minute, Philip. Yeah, uh, that goal for Sir has brought them right back into the game. Although they're struggling around the middle there, they're, they're slowly but surely coming into it. I wonder if Patrick Brady, if, if that ankle of his is 100%, because... Uh, he looks to be hobbling a little. The, yeah, and it, it will have a big bearing on the matter. If Patrick isn't 100%, Gano will know it towards the end. Although Mark McKeever has been very influential. He scored four points already. And... Uh, I got a little piece of information just before the game, a well kept secret, that Mark McKeever actually goes into this game injured. Yeah, well I mean, <laughs> there are two main players uh, at centre field, number eight and number nine. Uh, they have young Phillips at full forward, he's very uh, dom uh, dominant well. But at centre field, the two boys are, uh, they're in control at the moment. But if you say, uh, if both of them are carrying an injury, as time goes on, uh, uh, they could be in trouble as the game goes on. But right now, Mark is not showing any signs of that injury as he drives forward, takes the shot. Oh, that's a delightful score there for Mark McKeever. He scored all but one of uh, Downer's uh, six points so far. So David Ward to take the kick out. Mark Kelly will chase after that one for St Finbars. Emmett Madden will chase after him as Mark Kelly now drives forward. Still going forward with it, laying it off nicely and uh, that's gone out to the left and gone wide off the boot of Aaron McGee. We await the kick out. That will come from James Murray. Come on, James. Oh, nice. oh, Dropping out. Damien Hennigan picking it up for St Finbas to Marcus McGee. McGee sending it right through in there to Adrian Waters. Waters turning on to the left foot, sending it high. John Kieran and the goalkeeper underneath it. And John Kieran's clearance coming outfield. But it's uh, St Finbar's with Connor O'Reilly. Connor sending it way out to the left and sending it wide. That was an opportunity, Philip. That was spurned. That's right. That's St Finbar's two bad wides there in the last five minutes. And I, I get the impression that every time they get up, they want to be scoring because they're getting the ball, they're getting it hard enough to get it up there. They're good enough. To make the uh, uh, to make the openings and get the scoring opportunities, but they're not taking them. They're too costly wise there. Out it comes, 
and picked up by Mark McKeever. Mark McKeever right across into the middle. Paddy Turkin is there. And Paddy Turkin for St Finbar's out to Mark Kelly. And uh, Mark now a good ball carrier. Good vision as he tries to thread it through. Nicely knocked down there now to Conor O'Reilly. Conor O'Reilly shot, took a deflection. And, uh, well, it's uh, Anthony Smith of Gauna who's there. He was the one who did the initial blocking. James Murray got the ball out to Mark McKeever, who laid the ball right across in there now. Patrick Brady will jab it down to Dara Phillips. Dara Phillips will uh, send it on. That's uh, a well-placed ball to Kieran Fitzpatrick. Kieran now as he uh, tries to get away from uh, St Finbar's Anthony Smith, and uh, he's held since the free right across into the middle there now Dara Phillips will roll the ball inside Keaton Brady gets it further infield that's a good blocking down in there now by uh, Anthony Smith of the full back now coming out with it is Damien Hannigan or was it Paddy Turkin it could have been Turkin who got that one outfield now uh, Ray Fay was underneath it and Ray Fay in possession as he's been chased by uh, Gowner's Anthony Smith Ray Fay will hook the ball right across inside there now and uh, Niall Madden is there Niall Madden tackled by Conor O'Reilly this is Ray Fay for St Finbar sending it in that's going to drop inside and John Keane and content to let it go out over the end line and go wide and uh, almost 23 minutes played in the uh, first half so James Murray to take the kick out out it comes Marcus McGee will collect it about 50 metres out Dropping it up inside. James Murray is there for uh, the Ghana lads, and James now to feed the ball out as to, to Willie Stevenson. That's uh, Mark McKeever three all the way in, and good work from Damian Hannigan. But uh, he'll have to work harder. He's in possession. He wins the free out. Marcus McGee's free, intercepted by Niall Madden of Ghana. Niall Madden jabbing it down. That's going to run down and out over the line down here. Fergus Brady, it looks as if uh, the defender and attacker have uh, switched wings. They were on the uh, opposite wing a little while ago. That ball is deflected out over the sideline up here to our uh, right Mark McKeever sending the line ball right down inside Caden Fitzpatrick to lay it off to Patrick Brady Patrick Brady to boot it down for Dara Phillips Dara Phillips to try to get away from Paddy Turkin right across into the middle Caden Brady couldn't hold on to it Ronan Shields uh, will be beaten at that one by Hugh Fitzpatrick and Hugh Fitzpatrick will send it on for Mark Kelly of course goes Niall Madden but Mark Kelly controlling it but uh, the linesman flagging the ball had uh, gone out over the line down the line ball played right down there now Kieran Brady is uh, playing over in the right corner at the moment and uh, Gary Sloan is playing at top of the left all that time of course Ronan Shields out on the half forward line and he's now in possession as Patrick Brady now sends it down to Caden Fitzpatrick Caden Fitzpatrick will be confronted by Anthony Smith that's laid back at the field to Mark McKeever and McKeever with the high shot and the point Mark McKeever Adding to Garner's tally, seven points, 2-1-1. One, one. Mark is, uh, well, around the middle of the field at the moment, Philip. He's uh, the main playmaker. He's the main score-getter as well. Well, at the moment, he's a difference. He hasn't scored six points out of seven there, and uh, St. Fimmers can't handle him. But St. Fimmers, in the last ten minutes, have come right back into that game there. Marcus McGee and Hubert Patrick have sent the field. And uh, they're half-back in and playing very well, Damien Hannigan in particular, and the wing half-forwards, Mark Kelly and Ray Fay. But... Um, 
They need to be scoring when they get up, and that's the problem. They're not scoring. They've got three wides there uh, uh, because in the end. And uh, going again attacking, and it's the uh, McKeever Fitzpatrick combination. So, Mark to take the gown of free. And to add another to his and Gowner's tally, be it from play or be it from freeze, this is a, a very special talent. Yeah, uh, he plays some game of football there. He's very cool. Uh, he, uh, uh, he plays the game at his own pace there, really. He, he, he's a top class player. As you say, from play or from freeze, he, he put the ball over the bar. It's now double scores. And I think St. Fimbers need to score two before half time. Get them back into the game. There's about three minutes of the half remaining. As that comes out, and Q Fitzpatrick, fine fielding by Q Fitzpatrick for St. Finbar's, letting the ball off long and hard up there to Adrian Waters. The full ball well taken by Waters, sends it in and sends it over the bar. Now, he looked it in. Was he going for that uh, far corner again? Uh, it's hard no, I'd say now, uh, it's hard no, you see the point of it is, when the Fimbers get the ball up, they're quite capable of uh, upsetting that kind of defence, and when they get it up, as I say, if they could score everything went up, they'd have gone uh, um, uh, uh, in big trouble, but it's, when they get up, they have to score like that, that's a fine score, now Walter's getting 1-1 one, one there now, this young, uh, Mark Kelly he's he playing very, well. yeah, very well, playing very well, but James Murray intercepts there now, Aaron McGee will go across to within the challenge as James Murray tries to find the room and the time and gets the ball out the field. That's nicely controlled there now by Emmett Madden. Now it's Mark McKeever and Mark McKeever again down. Dara Phillips couldn't hold on to it and uh, there's a switch in the St Finbar's team as the Anthony Brady has uh, gone to centre half and Paddy Turkin to full back on the St Finbar's team. That's uh, centre back for Gown and Niall Madden who pulls that down and now it's Patrick Brady. Patrick to feed it way way down. Kieran Fitzpatrick, he is a source of worry. That's why St Finbar's uh, made the change and Paddy Turkin doing very well but uh, the referee coming to Turkin's rescue there awarding the free out but uh, Caden Fitzpatrick Philip is a big threat to the St Finbar's defence he is and uh, Clark was going back there full back Clark was playing well at centre half it's a bit of a gamble for St Finbar's but I mean if they have to uh, uh, if they have to keep Kieran uh, Fitzpatrick quiet then it's probably worth it Clerk as I said was playing well at centre half to have him in there full back he took the ball off uh, Fitzpatrick there so it might work out for them at least uh, he prevented a score on that occasion he did, yes. 8 points to 1 goal and 2 I make it that there's uh, a bit with a minute left in this first half as David Ward's kick comes way way out the field and uh, it's uh, Gauna now with uh, Emmett Madden feeding the ball forward. Uh, Ronan Brady is going back there to collect for St Finbar's. That's that over the sideline. That's uh, hit long and hard inside. Paddy Clerkin is uh, there now for the Finn Bars and Paddy well out there now to Q Fitzpatrick Q Fitzpatrick uh, tackled by Gary Sloan as he feeds the ball way way up there again Adrian Waters tapping it back to make space for himself picking it up James Murray out there with him this is Conor O'Reilly Conor O'Reilly now going forward Conor trying to get into a shooting position sends it over the bar so that's uh, two points for Conor O'Reilly and uh, a goal and a point for uh, the full forward uh, Adrian Waters. They seem to be the players that uh, St Finbar's will be depending on for the scores, Philip. Oh yeah, uh, I think that was a crucial score there now because, as you say, it's just half time now. It's one three to eight points. The difference of two teams really is Mark McKeever. Paddy Brady, he's still limping there. I think going to have a problem there because he hasn't played well. Uh, by his own standards since and the injury since the injury so it's a problem for Gauna uh, they might put him in full forward it's hard to know but McKeever <coughs> McKeever is keeping Gauna in the game he's got 7 out of 8 points and for all the dominance uh, the, Gauna, the Gauna forward line are not playing well as I say only one only one other player scored Ronan Shields Ronan Shields so they're going to have, to have a look at themselves and why the Fimbers get the ball up 
uh, O'Reilly and Walters, they're quite capable uh, of causing damage. And the two wing half forwards are very impressive, Mark Kelly and Ray Fay. So they've all to play for, and St. Fimbles have the, the slight breeze in the second half. So it's 50 50 at the moment. So uh, we'll come back and we'll bring you the story and the pictures of that second half. Right now, we'll uh, take our break. Just as the players are gone for theirs, the scoreboard reads down eight points. St. Finbar's one goal and three. Second half about to get underway as uh, referee Brian Crow now just uh, checks the watches and uh, as they did at the lineup at the first half, I see Kieran Fitzpatrick and Patrick Brady lining up for the throw in with the. Uh, Mark McKeever in at full forward. I was down through the crowd at half time and uh, we were joking about something because there was one of the names on the Ghana team that I was uh, somewhat mixed up in. That's their number 12, William Stevens. And his mother told me that uh, at school people asked, was he Stephen Williams or William Stevens? I can tell you that he's William Stevens and not Stevenson. The second half gets underway. And it's uh, Patrick Brady who will lay it off to Kieran Fitzpatrick. Kieran Fitzpatrick inside to Mark McKeever. Mark being followed by Paddy Clerken. Still Mark McKeever going forward. Still driving forward. There's, uh, he's brought down. Now Brian Crow is going back there. He uh, dropped uh, a little piece of valuables. The free has been taken quickly. Paddy Clerken about to uh, roll it out. Gary Sloan taps it back. But it's Anthony Smith and St Finbar's Anthony getting the ball out to John Maguire and John Maguire downfield to Q Fitzpatrick but in goes Patrick Brady the referee has uh, called up the play <laughs> just a little word in passing there right now it's uh, Hugh Fitzpatrick who's about to take the free for St Finbar. Feeds it into Marcus McGee. Marcus McGee now trying to get away from Dara Phillips as that's uh, dropped inside. That's uh, well held back in there now. James Murray gets it out and Patrick Brady will jab it out now to uh, Mark McKeever. McKeever to send it further on. That's collected inside by Caden Fitzpatrick. Caden looks around. Caden Fitzpatrick being chased by a couple of uh, St Finbar players. Willie Stevens was in after it there, couldn't quite collect it. Fergus Brady is there, and Fergus Brady to clear it out for St Finbars, but the, the ball will eventually break out to Connor O'Reilly. O'Reilly going forward, being chased by Niall Madden. Still Connor O'Reilly trying to uh, get room, turns onto the left foot, sends it in, sends it over the bar. That's a fine score, that's his third point of the day. And yeah. uh, that's what St Finbars needed. Yeah, the one that scored badly and uh, Conor O'Reilly, his two feet there, he ran there soon on the right foot, he come across his left and he tapped it over. It's great to see a two footed player and as I say, when the Fimbers get the ball up, they're quite capable of getting the scores. So Emmett Madden lays it off now to uh, Mark McKeever and McKeever, there's just one point between the sides as the ball is played inside. Anthony Smith will go back and leave it to goalkeeper David Ward to pull on and clear out. Now Niall Madden of Ghana goes across. Ray Fay will uh, go in there to try and pick it up for and succeeds in picking it up for St Finbars. Lays it back to John Maguire and Maguire sending it back out towards uh, the wing and now Fergus Brady sends the long ball in but Patrick Brady of Ghana is there to send it uh, back outfield again. That's uh, nicely fetched now and this is Mark Kelly who took the pass from Cupid Patrick. Good luck in down by Emmett Madden but uh, Damien Hannigan was there as well and now it's Q Fitzpatrick that's uh, sending it in high that's dropping out to the left and it has gone wide it's 8 points to 1-4 we've played 3 minutes in the second half and uh, the breeze diagonally though it be will favour the St Finbras team in the second half Philip. that's right um, I still think Patrick really struggling a bit out there uh, I, mean, I just wonder why they don't put him in full forward. He sees him moving all right, but he's not having the impression there he is now with the ball that he's quite capable of doing. So he might struggle off that injury yet. He's a very strong player. Ronan Shields now picking it up. Dropping it inside to Mark McKeever. McKeever going for the shot. 
held in there by goalkeeper David Ward sent out towards John Maguire William Stevens will challenge with Maguire for that one Gary Sloan is out there as well with the free to St Finbars and John Maguire to take it down to Ray Fay Ray Fay to send it into space but James Murray of Ghana will fill that space collect the ball feeds it out to Niall Madden Still Niall Madden and uh, the referee awarding the free out. <laughs> so Niall Madden with the free. Nicely intercepted by Marcus McGee. McGee for St Finbar's feeding it down. Emmett Sloan will try and hold off uh, the forwards there as uh, James Murray goes back to collect and James Murray will uh, deliver the ball out to Niall Madden. Niall to try and get away from Conor O'Reilly succeeds in doing so. Now Gauna to build the attack as the, the ball is uh, fed up there towards Patrick Brady now it drops for Mark McKeever McKeever being tackled as uh, Paddy Turkin picks it up and Paddy Turkin for some fin bars feeds it down the field for Mark Kelly to run on to Kelly now a fast moving forward still Patrick oh that's a good score from Mark Kelly that's a great score and it also levels the game down uh, as the game goes on, uh, St. Fimber are getting, uh, they're getting very strong at the top, especially around centre field where Marcus McGee, he was Patrick, and Mark, Mark Kelly's played a very good game, as is Conor O'Reilly. So, down and out, they have the problems, that, uh, that's the first time that both teams have been level now, so St. Fimber's back in with a big shout now. So, we wait the kick out from James Murray of Ghana. <laughs> Out to Mark McKeever and the free to Ghana. Mark sends it into Caden Fitzpatrick. Caden uh, is out now in the middle of the field and Paddy Brady is in at full forward. Caden Fitzpatrick with the free. He'll lob that one in. Trust Patrick Brady. Paddy Turkin after him. Patrick will try and roll that one into Stara Phillips but uh, Damien Hannigan is there and Damien a very effective uh, wing back out the field it comes but uh, Niall Madden of Gown is there Niall trying to get away from Conor O'Reilly the free is to Gown Ronan Shields taps it in there to uh, Mark McKeever, trying to get away from Marcus McGee. And uh, the number about to be noted. Their level at uh, 8 points to go, 1 5 to St. Finbars, with just over 7 minutes played in the uh, second half. Last time they were level, McKeever with a free uh, change that. He doesn't on this occasion, and the ball has gone out for a 45. Been, uh, will the ball be moved in on the 45 uh, kick is taken rolled up to Caden Fitzpatrick Fitzpatrick trying to get away from St Finbar's defenders takes the shot sends it over the bar and down out in front by 9 points to 1 goal and 5 there's uh, about 8.5 minutes played in the second half now Philip, you talked in the early stages about uh, the early dominance of going around the middle of the field, but certainly from midway to the half or so, Marcus McGee and uh, Hugh Fitzpatrick and uh, 
the wing forwards, they've uh, won a lot of possession down there and they've threatened quite a lot for St Finbar. They have really, and uh, the St Finbar defence are playing very well because that's only the third Ghana player to score. If you take uh, Mark McCaver's contribution out of the game, the Ghana forwards are not functioning at all well. And so when they get the ball down, they're quite capable of scoring and they're coming back into this game more and more as time goes on. And there's Stanger Man, Adrian Waters, looping it inside. And John Kiernan is there in the goal as the ball deflected back there. Now it's Martin O'Reilly in to Mark Kelly. Kelly laying it off for Adrian Waters. Waters will take the shot, drops it across. Aaron McGee. McGee now will try and roll it back towards Conor O'Reilly. That's knocked out over the sideline. Niall Madden up towards Ronan Shields. Didn't get the touch on it as uh, Damien Hannigan did uh, everything that was asked of him and now Keith Fitzpatrick is uh, blown up for uh, over carry and then Mark McKeever sends the free up to Dara Phillips who doesn't collect. Anthony Smith is there. Anthony Smith sending the ball downfield now to Ray Fay for St Finbars. Fay will lay it off for Marcus McGee but the whistle has been blown. There's a free to St Finbars and Marcus McGee will take it. Dropping it in, tapped across to Mark Kelly, the shot, oh, it comes back off the crossbar from Mark Kelly, it comes back at uh, Conor O'Reilly, dropping it in, and it's pulled down in there on the goal line, and who pulled it down but Mark McKeever, coming out with it, working his way out, up the field that will come, picked up by Marcus McGee, laid back out to John Maguire, Maguire for Finbars, that's a tap down. Now it's Aaron McGee. Marcus McGee. John McGuire. Dropping it inside. James Murray near the end line. Out over the end line for the 45. Yeah, Mark Kelly was very, very lucky there. That was a massive shot there. He hit the crossbar. Uh, so Finbars, they're lucky. That's the second time they've hit the crossbar now. And um, going after hands full at the moment. Uh, I, I think Perry Bailey's in full forward. Yeah, he's not. He's not 100% fit, and you can see it in him. And as I say, the Garner forward line aren't functioning as well as they might be. But that's due to good defence by uh, St Finbars. So uh, with a point there for, for Garner, uh, there's that one in the end. And let's say if Kelly should have had a good into that, St Finbars, well, well, they've been the lead. And uh, they, they deserve to be at least level with Gowan at, at this stage. As uh, Conor O'Reilly's uh, 45 has dropped in, Mark McKeever is in possession. James Murray about to take the free out. Comes out and it's Emmett Sloan, he couldn't quite hold on to it. Ray Fay being chased by Anthony Smith. Third level. 1 6 to 9 points. There's uh, 12 and a half minutes played in the second half. James Murray trying uh, to find space and finds Caden Fitzpatrick with the kick out. Up now, Patrick Brady has uh, moved away out to pick up possession. Jersey tug, but play on to the referee. That's uh, laid back to Caden Fitzpatrick. John Maguire in with the challenge. Fitzpatrick still in the possession. Paddy Turkin almost got in the way. Play on to Brian Crow. Now it's uh, Patrick Brady, but uh, Conor O'Reilly goes back to pick it up for St Finbar's to lay it off there now. Damien Hannigan into the path of uh, Marcus McGee. Now Adrian Waters. There's a free into St Finbar's and Philip St Finbar's 
are beginning to dominate here. They are. It, that was great defending there by St Finbar's at 40 yards out. And they're fighting hard there. Uh, you see the seven and a half hour there, Conor O'Reilly and the full forward getting stuck in there. And as the game goes on, they're starting to dominate. But they'll have to hit their scores. They're still uh, guilty of uh, missed chances. That's right. They have about six wides altogether and hit the crossbar twice. So. Uh, Gowan are living on the luck a wee bit now at the moment they're, they're struggling at this stage to get the ball in in the first 10-50 minutes it was all Gowna. but as you see Patrick Bay is in full forward or is he coming back out again he's, they're back, trying, out again. he's back out again I, I think it's uh, they're trying to get the best out of him here comes the kick out and uh, Gowna get the free for the no John Mark McKeever <laughs> Niall Madden up to Caden Fitzpatrick, being chased by Paddy Clerkin. And uh, that's Marcus McGee who picks it up for St Finbars. Down it goes. Niall Madden is there to collect to get it out to Patrick Brady. Patrick Brady defeated up for William Stevens. That's uh, a little bit strong and uh, beats him out over the sideline on the far side. We're about halfway through the half, Philip, and it's all square. It's all square Tommy and it's anyone's game at the moment and the way it's going at the moment the, the, the longer the game goes on the better some Finmans are getting especially around the middle of the field plus they're defending very well um, Gauna have only I think only three three Gauna players scored McKeever got I think eight points seven points out of the nine he hasn't scored in this half Patrick Brady is obviously struggling so Gauna have a few problems and as the game wears on the Finmans are getting a little bit better but as I said, hit the cross there with Mark Kelly. Had that got in, they'd really be uh, uh, on top. But Gowna are they're playing away uh, to their strengths. McKeever isn't scoring, or well, he's not scoring. Gowna aren't scoring, so they, that's where they have the problem. But as I say, Sir Fimbers, that's great defence by Sir Fimbers. from the goalkeeper out, David Ward. He's very cool. He's made. He's caught four or five balls. He's used them well. Anthony Smith, uh, Damien Hannigan, they're all playing well. So it's anyone's game. Looking concerned out there as they uh, attend the injured players. Meanwhile, down on the line in front of us, I see a consultation with uh, Joe Brady, Seamus McCabe, but uh, Seamus has now moved away. Gerald Pearson uh, and Joe Brady now, and they're contemplating a substitute. I see Seamus McCabe gone to the dugout to take a substitute to uh, put into the Ghana team. Right now, Ghana with Dara Phillips. Rolling it out. Coming out there was Ronan Brady. Going back there now is uh, Emmett Madden, supported by Patrick Brady. Leads it into Niall Madden. To Mark McKeever, to Niall Madden, on for Caden Fitzpatrick, to Niall Madden, jabbing it on, asking Dara Phillips to run onto it. McKeever is there as well, bringing it forward, but uh, that taking a de deflection off a defender, going out for the 45. We will have to uh, double check with uh, some of the counter people whenever they introduce a substitute because uh, due to the fact that they had to wear a couple of the uh, subs numbers, the numbers may not uh, be in rotation. But this is Conor O'Reilly after good work there by Marcus uh, McGee. O'Reilly coming forward for St Finbars. Taking the shot dropping it in and John Kiernan is there in the goal gets it out to James Murray and James Murray will deliver it long out the field for Niall Madden Niall picking it up Ronan Shields to his right he goes up the middle to Caden Fitzpatrick Fitzpatrick now 
Under some pressure from Paddy Clerken, still Fitzpatrick, he'll need help. The help comes from William Stevens. John Maguire robs him. And John Maguire now, crossing the halfway line, booting it inside to Adrian Waters. Waters to roll it off to Conor O'Reilly. O'Reilly now. Turning, shooting, and sending it wide. And after all that work, after all that work, the St. Finbar supporters in front of me put their hands to their head because uh, that attack had lead written all over it. Well, now, Gavin are about, I think, they are about to have introduced the substitute. Clifford Brady is gone into the game. Here comes the kick. Clifford Brady replacing yeah. Gary Sloan. Yeah. <laughs> so Gary Sloan gone and Clifford Brady in and William Stevens in possession laying the ball back. Mark McKeever will feed that way up the field now to Clifford Brady. And now Clifford once again in possession, trying to feed it inside to us, Kieran Brady. Kieran now for Gowner, looks around for support, and the ball laid off there. McKeever going in. Brian Crow is going to throw the ball up between them. It's uh, still stalemate at uh, 1 6 to 0 9. And another stoppage. Uh, um, I mean, that's a bad miss down there by uh, Ronan O'Reilly. He did everything right. He's a fine player. He has two feet, as I said already. But he got inside there. He really should have scored. It, it would have put the Fimmers back in the lead. As I say, uh, they're wide. They're adding up a wee bit now. They're in control of the game more so than going up, but they're not scoring. So the game restarts. There's a. Uh, a little with 10 minutes left in it and they're uh, still deadlocked as uh, a drizzle comes down in Brefty and Marcus McGee soloing in the direction of the Gowner goal still going, jabbing the ball in that's easy for Patrick Brady out to James Murray that's uh, too strong for Ronan Shields and Damien Hannigan is there Hannigan has played well in the half back line for uh, the uh, St. Finbar's uh, very unlucky there to be whistled up. It uh, appeared to be rolling. Caden Fitzpatrick laying it off now. James Murray. Patrick Brady's come back at full back. This is Mark McKeever laying it inside. Dara Phillips couldn't hold on to it. Fergil Bra Fergus Brady clears it out, but William Stevens is th there. William. Dropping it in, in again to McKeever, trying to find a way in, laying the ball off. Now this is Clifford Brady, Clifford Brady for Gauna. And uh, Ronan Brady's clearance comes down to Mark Kelly. A free out to St Finbar's, Mark Kelly jabs it short. Now, Adrian Waters has moved away out the field as well. This is Conor O'Reilly. Conor for St Finbar's. He'll drop that one inside. That's going to bounce and bounce out over the end line. Chances going a begging. And if St Finbar's end up on the losing the podium here today, as we say, Philip, well, they've only themselves to blame. That's right there. Uh, yeah, they're getting the chances, and that was Conor O'Reilly again. He's only enforced That ball just hopped wide them. But uh, Gowna have made a switch there. They've brought James Murray out to send the field. I will McKeever, and they're Paddy Brady in full back. So, I think it's, the, uh, it's their last throw of the dice, but they're not penetrating. That's, that's a Finmore's defence. They tried all late. Uh, they've been on top of the start. There's another way for Gowna. But that uh, Finmore's defence is very tight and played quite well today. 
There's about eight minutes left in the game. And David Ward to take the kick out. Out the field it comes, there's a free... <laughs> That's uh, Marcus McGee, Niall Madden is after him, still McGee, uh, uh, good work there from Niall Madden, Martin O'Reilly way up towards the end line, Mark Kelly picking it up on the end line, coming forward, still going forward but uh, the ball pulled on, that took an affliction inside, Aaron McGee, that's the lead for the first time in the game, first and Finbars coming from Aaron McGee. They lead by 1-7 to 9. There's uh, just about 7 minutes or so left in the game, Philip. This is really putting it up to ground and now. It is, and uh, once again, it's Mark Kelly. Great work along the sideline. I thought he lost the ball. He got across the square, and a very crucial point uh, by Aaron McGee. And it could be... Uh, a very important point in the end but I think at the moment the dude is there to be that uh, in the lead because Gowna has faded as the game has gone on Gowna has have faded as I say they cannot penetrate that good September defence and it's uh, Mark McKeever now to pick it up for Gowna fouled there by Hugh Fitzpatrick And uh, Mark sends the free into James Murray. Back out to the line to Mark McKeever. Dropping it up. Tap down, but uh, Ronan Brady is there. Ronan was fouled, and the free is from where the ball landed. Malikimi Gee going in there with the drinks for the moment. Making his way up towards Ronan Brady. And the Maliki calling to referee Brian Crow to uh, hold up the game while uh, Ronan Brady is being attended to. to uh, Patrick Brady early in the game certainly nullified his uh, authority on this game Philip and uh, has indeed been a huge loss to Gauna. It has really yeah uh, his contribution now uh, really from the start I mean from the first five minutes Savimers couldn't get the ball up the field then Paddy unfortunately turned his ankle uh, down in the full forward lane and they moved him up and down the field they're trying to get the best out of him he's just not able to do it it's, it's a force for Gauna, but um, a fit Paddy Bailey there now would make a huge difference, all right. Ronan Brady is back on his feet. Marcus McGee will take the St. Finbar's free. Collected there by Mark McKeever. Cut out to Patrick Brady. Going forward with it, his side one point in her ears. That's fed across to the unrunning McKeever, who didn't uh, at the first time collect it, but gets the free. <laughs> and if ever Gauna needed a score from McKeever, they need one now. St. Finbar's one point to the good with about five minutes left in the game. It's nail-biting time for both sides. That's hit high and that's hit wide. And uh, while uh, 
his shooting was impeccable in the first half. Mark has seemed to have faded a bit in the second, Philip. That's right there. In fact, Gannon have only scored one point in the second half. That's from Kieran Fitzpatrick. Now, Mark McKeever hasn't scored in the second half at all. And it's it's an indication of the way the game has gone in the second half. It has slipped away from Gowna. And as I say, uh, they find it very hard to score. And that's uh, in the first half, Mark would have put that over. That's the way games go. So Gowna get the line ball out there on the far side. And it's uh, Patrick Brady who's uh, going to take it across into Dara Phillips. Back to Patrick Brady. Drops it inside to Kieran Fitzpatrick. He didn't quite hold on to it, but gets the free in. And uh, Patrick Brady is uh, going to take this free for Ghana. Less than four minutes left in the game. <laughs> Held in there by goalkeeper David Ward. And to the tears of the St. Finbar supporters, gets the ball cleared out. William Stevens out there after it, picking it up, laying it back to Niall Madden. That's a block down inside. And now St. Finbar's as the ball comes down to Q Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick will lob that one long and hard down the field. And now here's the chance. What a goal! What a goal from Martin O'Reilly. Oh, he was Mark Kelly, was it? Number 13, Martin O'Reilly. Oh, Martin O'Reilly, it was a great goal. Oh, he, he struck that. That goal. But it was a, it's a massive goal, really was. A uh, quick ball, down were attacking. When Martin really got in there, I don't know if he's going for the goal or the point. He seemed to be know what he was doing, but it was the top top left hand corner. Goalkeeper John Kieran hadn't a chance. Great goal. Uh, a goal to win any final. And with uh, less than three minutes left, it's in Finbars now with Conor O'Reilly dropping in. John Kieran brings it down, and John gets it out to James Murray. James Murray now will lay it across into the middle. Now it's putting it up to the downer men. This is uh, Mark McKeever trying to work his way out. Two seven to nine points. Anthony Smith leaves it and Mark McKeever will take it. Up it comes to us, Caden Fitzpatrick. Inside to Patrick Brady. Brady now going forward for Gauna. In now to James Murray. Murray passing it inside to Clifford Brady. Clifford Brady shot. That comes back in front of the goal there. And Ronan Brady going down injured as he clears it. That's rolling to the line. That's out over the line. There's another stoppage. That was a very important intercession, interception in there by Ronan Brady. It was. Uh, Clifford Brady, unlucky. I think he hit the post there. It was a flying shot. I know uh, David Ward uh, was close enough to it. I think the ball hit the post, but it was young uh, Ronan Brady in there uh, that saved the day for St. Finbars. And... Uh, he was the right man in the right position for uh, first defenders. Going to need a goal now. If they're going to rescue this game, they need a goal. And for a long time, as I say, it looked like it was going to be going as there. But fair play to some Finbars. They kept plugging away. It's been a very competitive game. And both sides, did, uh, they deserve credit. They played football the whole way through it. They pitched that little bit slippy. But as I say, really at the end of the day, the going forward line never got through that uh, well marshalled St. Finbars defence. There's about a minute and a half to go. There's four points between them. As uh, Mark McKeever prepares to take this uh, sideline kick. Dropping it in. Hugh Fitzpatrick coming out with it. And Fitzpatrick to the huge St. Finbar cheer, getting the ball downfield for Ray Fay. Ray Fay being chased by Anthony Smith. That's in for Mark Kelly. Couldn't quite collect. Manages to get it on to Aaron McGee. McGee's got players inside. Goes for the shot and sends it wide. 
Now Martin O'Reilly had taken up a great position inside but Gowna now will come as Niall Madden gets the ball way way up there towards Ronan Shields. We're in towards uh, the last minute of the game. It depends on what time Brian Crow may add on. Niall Madden up to Caden Fitzpatrick up to James Murray James Murray inside but Paddy Clerkin is there Brian Crow looks at the watch my watch tells me that there's seconds left Brian Crow waits as a gunner will come at the attack this is Caden Fitzpatrick Fitzpatrick to lob it right across in there Adrian Waters Paddy Brady is there Paddy for Gauna to lay it off now what can James Murray do lead inside to McKeever McKeever going forward the shot from McKeever the wide from McKeever this kick out Philip could well bring that final whistle well that last move tells the tale of the whole day Mar McKeever in the first half he scored 7 points he hasn't scored in the second half he's kicked at least 3 wides that's the difference uh, Tommy in the teams uh, so Fimmer's battle away and battle away I have no doubt had Patrick Bailey been 100% fit it could have been, uh, the outcome could have been different but some Vimbers deserve great credit for the way they battled away they have a great defence and up front when they got the chance I know they missed a few chances but they're half forward in particular they but won the day and they deserve the win they are the champions so Adrian Waters will be the one who will uh, come up to receive the cup Uh, I'd also like to thank Billy Simpson, the referee, 
Look at that mark up here the other day. Uh, I'd like to thank Joe Ray, Shane McCabe, and Sharon Pearson for putting a serious commitment with us. Uh, a huge thanks from not just me, but the whole team. And uh, finally, I'd like to thank the Fiddlers for a good game of football. And well done. Tommy Riley, congratulations. It was uh, a hard hour's work after a hard year's preparation. Oh, it was very difficult. <laughs> it was uh, it was di more difficult along the line, I think, than on the pitch. But I have to I have to hand it to the players. They, they did everything they were told. They put in a wonderful performance. Um, overall, they had great balance in the team. Uh, great, great wing players. We, we knew that Ghana were going to be very, very strong up the middle of the field, you know. And we tried to keep it away from them as much as possible and play our wing forwards, our, wi our wing half backs. We have a good balance in the team, and I think it paid off when, when we got into go, got going. Really, it, it, it wasn't too bad. Uh, in the first half, we we seem to lose our way a little bit. You know, we we, we tend to panic, and we're we're a difficult team to settle down at any stage. You know, we we. Uh, uh, tend to be slow starters, but when they got going, I think they played uh, some lovely football. It was a great game of football, very exciting, you know. And Garner were always in there with a shot, and uh, fair play to them. You know, you have to you have to handle the Garner. They have a great, they have a good team. They're a wee bit weak on the wings, but uh, up the middle they have great players. They had two great players at midfield. They had a full forward, uh, number 14. I don't know what his name is, but uh, a tremendous player. And we had we had difficulty with him. We made a few switches to try and counteract it, but uh, over overall. Um, I think the, the balance on our team re really worked for us. Um, we, 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 played, uh, we played normally, um, a man that we would play, uh, Adrian Waters, captain of the team, he'd normally be midfield. We played him full forward and in the first half when we were playing against a stiffish breeze, you wouldn't re realise it until, until you were on the p pitch. And uh, Adrian was vital, he got a vital goal at the very, very beginning of the game, you know, that, that really put us, because we were up against us at that stage. And uh, he was a great move, we brought him out to the middle of the field in the second half and uh, we played really three midfielders where our full forward didn't stay in at all, but it, it, it worked, and it worked well. So well, I'm delighted. I'm delighted for them. They're a great bunch of lads. They're a credit to, to their families, and they're a credit to, to the community that they come from. Like, I, I, have, I, have, I don't think I could say any more about them. They're a wonderful bunch of fellas. Tommy, you mentioned Adrian's goal. It was a great goal to settle the side, but I've got to mention the one that sealed it at the end. That was uh, a break out of defence and some finish from Martin O'Reilly. It really was. That was a wonderful goal. It's funny enough, I, I, I was down, given out to me, ha full back line at that stage, and I really didn't see the lead up to it, but um, <laughs> I'd love to see it on television again, you know, because I think it was a good goal. I just seen, it, I seen him turning and I seen him shooting, and... Uh, 
I, I really didn't see the, the lead up to it because as, as I said I was concentrating on the defence of end of, the, of, the, of our game because I knew that if they came back at us they, and broke through the middle that we would have trouble so I was, I was coaxing the, the, the half back and the full back line all the time in the second half and really I didn't see the lead up to that goal but I think it was a wonderful goal it'll be nice to see it again so. It was fantastic Tommy thanks for talking to me uh, You're welcome thanks very much Just, uh, the goal there. I was looking for Maliki McGee Congrats, Maliki. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, hard-earned victory, but uh, when they're hard-earned, sweet. Yeah, they're very sweet now. Uh, it was a great victory and a great uh, display by all the team. I think we had a more balanced team on, on the day. And a lot of credit goes to Tommy Riley, uh, who I got involved there in the year. Hadn't been involved in underage football. Done a tremendous work, moulding this team together. Created great team spirit among all the lads. And... Uh, they really fought for each other and uh, no outstanding players there they were exceptional but it's still as a team they played very well but it was great as Tommy put it in a nutshell a very well balanced outfit a very well balanced outfit and hopefully they'll keep together and go through the grades up to senior uh, as well as being a balanced team their manner is first class and uh, I don't think he had one problem during the year when management terms with them very good discipline uh, knew what they were about and it uh, was very easy to, to look after. A, pre a pleasure to be with them. As I say, I'm not directly involved with the team, chairman of the club, and uh, supported Tommy and the team management role, but it's a tremendous victory for him. Thank Maliki you. McGee, thanks for talking Thank to me. There's a, an old saying in football that's been referred to as a game of two halves. Yeah. The first half for Garner today, everything went more than well, shall we say. The second half, well, it tells its own story. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I suppose uh, to look on, you think that things are going well from Garner. I, myself, I didn't think that things were going that well. We weren't playing well. We're fit to play, as you know yourself, we're fit to play a lot, lot better than we did today. Uh, Patrick Brady getting hurt inside the first couple of minutes is a major loss to any team. Now that he's on the county under 16, he's a tremendous uh, prospect for the county. And to see a player like that of county standard not fit to walk around the pitch is, is sad. Like, But all Judas and Fimbers that played very, very well and they're a good team and well managed team. No. They're a very well balanced side because uh, now in the early stages before your injuries occurred you were in a four points to one lead they did get a chance that they scuffed but they came back and hit you with a foul that first goal that settled them and uh, from then on they came more and more into the game yeah definitely a goal settles any team and we started off Mark McKeever full forward hoping for the same thing get a goal settle us but uh, they are there as you said they were a far far better balanced team um, Yet again, you know yourself, you look down to the list of players we have, we have only two of that team over age next year. So in Gowna we expect a lot of players, it doesn't matter what team we put out, we have Patrick Brady and Mark McKeever on a senior panel, that's expecting a lot of them. We expect a lot of players in Gowna, um, most of them players are 15 years of age, two of them is over age next year for another 16, which says well for Gowna, but our number one aim really was to get into Division 1 at under 16 next year, we fluffed our chance. Joe, but 
all the ingredients is there to do it again. Oh definitely, definitely. Two players over age at this level is, is unbelievable. Our dressing room has got it down there, but we have a big we have a lot in front of us for next year, I think, if if we can all stick together and keep it going now. Well let's hope that the players and particularly the management team stick together because yourself and Seamus McCabe and Gerald Pearson have done a really fine job. Joe, it's commiserations on this occasion. There's been times in the past when I said congratulations and there will be times in the future when I'll say it again for now. I'll say thanks a million for talking to me. Thanks very much Tommy. Thanks a million. So from Breffley Park in Cavan, St Finbar's go home at the cup, we'll say Slano Gaspana.